Hi, welcome to Built for Life. We are still in this session three on the role of the wife and it's been great so far, hasn't it? And I just want to remind people that if you can, like the video, subscribe as well. And if anything has positively impacted your life or your marriage or encouraged you, then why not drop a comment down and it will really be great to hear from you in that way. So praise the Lord, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we tackle the subject today on the role of the wife, and we're learning so much together, I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will challenge us where we need to be challenged, encourage where we need to be encouraged, and, and, and help more than anything to implement, implementation, action upon the words. I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. If you haven't got the notes, that's fine. Don't worry, but just try and write down five bullet points and maybe write down the answers to the discussion points at the end of the video. And so that would be really great. And uh, let's listen to what the Lord has to teach today on a very important subject. It, it, it isn't for everybody, this one, uh, but it is still part of the scripture teaching on uh, the role of the wife. And today we're dealing with session 3G, session 3G, which is minister's wives. And so you might say, well, I'm not a minister's wife. Well, that's fine. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you might not one, one day be, or it doesn't mean that these characteristics are still not important. But if you are a minister's wife, or you know a minister's wife, then maybe send the video or share the video to them as well. It'd be really helpful um, to this. But because it's so important, because sometimes we see ministers as the man. Uh, not always, of course, but we, we see primarily the minister as a man. And when I say ministry, it's not just about pastors. It's not just about pastors at all or evangelists. It can teachers, it can be shepherds, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, but also elders as well and their wives because they are part and parcel of leadership in the church. And so this is so important when we deal with the, min the role of the wife as well, that wives are aware if you are a minister's wife or a leader's wife, that you have a part to play. I think we've already learned as we've been going through this session how important a godly wife's character is upon her husband anyway. But even more so when your husband might have a leadership position and so he, he, that will be reflected and magnified probably even more in a leadership position because of the church congregation and, and the people you're ministering to. And so that's why the Bible does deal with this subject as ministers' wives. I will say, however, that this isn't about perfection either. You know, you know, some, some people can use these characteristics as almost a tick list. And if you fail once, then you failed altogether. No, this is about character. This is about patterns of behavior. And so if your pattern is contrary to these characters, then you've got to change. You've got to change your behaviors if you're a minister's wife or a leader's wife in any shape or form. Or it's something certainly you should be growing in and increasing in. And, and, and while we might fail occasionally, it shouldn't be a pattern of life. And so let's go to the session purpose together and let's read what the Word of God has to say. Session purpose. In this session, you will realise that living out Christ in your marriage means as a minister's wife, you need to set an example. And again, we most of the time, we leave it, you can leave it to the men. I mean, I am a man, so, you know, you can leave it to the men or leave it to the, the male leader. And, and, and you as a wife might be in the background. And so because you're in the background, sometimes you feel that your role isn't as important 
or isn't as visual and so you can let some go of some of these characteristics but no the word of god speaks to you as wives as well that if you are a, a wife of a leader that your character that your godly character your role as a wife to your husband who is a leader is such a paramount importance because it will impact the church it will impact the reputation of your husband which in turn will impact the way he leads as well so all these factors are so important because even if you're in the background as a leader's wife you are still a wife to your husband and you're still in it together i'll say that again you're still in it together even in his leadership you're still in it together you're his help me you're his support in that role as well it's so important it isn't like a separate thing you're his support in his function in that role and so you too have to have a strong foundation not perfection but a strong foundation that is a pattern of your life uh, as well praise the lord amen so let's turn to the bible reading 1 timothy 3 verse 11 1 timothy 3 verse 11 which is a real section on elders and deacons and and leaders and uh, uh, and husband as leaders and males but also also the wives and this is what it says it says likewise their wives in other words what do you mean their wives the wives of the leaders must be reverent not slanderers temperate and faithful in all things so there's something that is positive you must be doing and something you must not be doing so what must you do you must be reverent you must be temperate and you must be faithful those three things as a minister's or leader's wife that the bible says that you need to be reverent temperate and faithful what you mustn't be doing is being a slanderer and we'll explain what that means in a moment so them are the things you shouldn't be doing you shouldn't be doing those things so let's go to the word in focus and let's have a look the word reverent what so this is something you must be doing reverent it means to be venerated for character honorable respected and honest and i really want to be uh, bring out that word honest there because honesty is key isn't it in a leadership position that if your husband's in a leadership position and of course in a leader's position you're dealing with people's lives uh, when your husband might be a leader you're de he's dealing with people's lives he's counseling people's lives he, he's talking about their lives sometimes things that are very private maybe and counseling them according to the word of god in those and pastoring them or leading them and talking with them in those areas of their life and of course a husband might need even as a leader to he can't hold it all to himself sometimes as you're his support you will be with him in those things especially if he's counseling ladies or married couples and things like that and you know as married couples you talk of course but that means you have to be honest and have good character as well you must be honest and respected because some parts of the congregation may not divulge what they need to divulge in conversation with your husband if you're not respectable or you're not honest or you're not true so they might feel they want to talk to you your husband who's a leader but because they think well if he talks to the wife then it's going to get out if you're a gossiper wives it, you know then it's going to get out into the congregation or as we used to say we don't want the the dirty laundry hung on the line you know we people don't want their dirty laundry hung out do they and so they might trust your husband because he might be trustworthy but as a wife if you're not trustworthy then they'll feel whether it does or not it's the implication you see that they all feel that the dirty laundry will be aired in public in the congregation through the wife 
maybe gossiping, etc., because she can't be trusted. And so the word of God is saying, look, wives, it's saying, if you're a wife of a leader, you need to be trustworthy. You need to be trusted. You need to be respected in a way that you are respectable. You've gained respect through being able to be trusted, you see. So that people know when the husband is counselling them or leading them, they know that their dirty laundry, their lives, their exposure will not be aired through conversations, through the, the avenue of the wife amongst the congregation. So not only should your husband be trustworthy, but you as his wife need to make sure you're trustworthy yourself and respected and respectable but respect is earned you see so you need as a, as a wife of a minister to be respected and you need to earn that respect amongst the congregation where he's leading as well but by being known for your character as being trustworthy wise and godly in character so that's something you must be done and and that's something that's not demanded sometimes churches can demand respect for for their wives if they're leaders you know and almost call them all kinds of names you got first ladies and and it's almost like presidential and i'm not knocking any of that i'm just saying that real respect is earned and it's ex it's earned through trust and character and so as wives of ministers you, and leaders you must begin to build your character and trustworthiness amongst the congregation where your husband is a leader amen that's so important praise the lord it says before i go on to what you shouldn't be i'll carry on with what you should be first so you should be reverent which means respected and honest uh, don't do dodgy deals either you know don't do dodgy deals with the church's money don't, <laughs> you might think why are you talking like this rich because these things do go on so don't be dodgy doing dodgy deals in the, with the money of the congregation don't be buying a new handbag with them you know ripping off congregations money you know and, and flaunting it all about as uh, off the congregation's money while somebody you know you kind of rub it in their face you must be respected not through fear not through bible bashing but respected because you're honest and true but what else must you be you must also be temperate temperate it's an old-fashioned word really but you must be temperate and the word temperate here means this abstaining from wine either entirely or at least for immoderate use and and, and and it has a root word in it, which I'll get to in a minute. But primarily, it means that you shouldn't be a drunkard. And, and this is one of the qualifications for leaders, that you shouldn't be a drunkard. It doesn't mean you should abstain entirely. It just means you should be under, the, you're under control. And so as a wife, you've got to say to yourself, am I under control? Can I control myself from substance abuse? And, and that can be alcoholism, it can be drug taking as well in this modern age, especially. Uh, you know, are you controlled by a substance and such as drugs and alcohol? Because um, as, a, as a minister and as a minister's wife, you've got to be able to be functioning correctly in your right mind. When you take alcohol and you get a lot of drunkenness or even substance abuse such as drugs, you're not in your right mind. You can be blurting out people's business. As I've already said about reverend, it's about being honest and trustworthy. And so when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, then in that state of intoxication, you can divulge congregational's business that shouldn't be divulged because it was said to your husband in confidence in part of the pastoral council or you can divulge the business of your husband as well maybe you know that can hang his dirty linen on the on the on the washing line as it were and air it to the congregation which isn't good either uh in in that kind of way um, and, and, and lose respect that way and lose the reputation of your husband that way because you know and so basically alcohol 
and drug taking will loosen the mouth with gossip and that will make you untrustworthy and so the bible's very clear look as a minister's wife don't be a person who's intoxicated and out of control of your mind your faculties and your mouth it doesn't mean you become an, uh, a person who doesn't drink alcohol or anything like that it just means you're in control of your mind and your faculties that's what the word of god says because then you'll be you will be secure with knowledge and information uh, and the way you treat people as well because when you when when you're under the intoxication you can treat people very badly and you're not in control of yourself you probably don't even know what you, you're doing but you can treat people very badly and so that's another reason why as a minister a minister shouldn't be a person who's constantly intoxicated and drunk or under the influence of drugs and neither should the wife because you are in that leadership role you know connecting with people and you can damage people with words damage don't they words entirely damage and so if you're not in your right faculty or your right mind your words can cut people down it can damage people it can expose people and and because you're not in control of yourself you won't stop it and so it's very damaging to the congregation very damaging to people's lives and very damaging to the leadership of your husband and so it's very important that you are not you know you should be a person who is temperate but also this word has a root word connected to it and I, you know it, it just really brings a sense of what it means as well to me to be calm and collective in spirit so uh, as a, a wife of a leader you need to be very calm and collective you know again like i've said before this isn't about showiness you know as a as a minister's wife and you might be a person who's in the background uh, and i'll say something about that in a minute but but the reality is there's a in the background to me means a, a, there's a sense of calmness about you because people can trust you you're very calm and collective you're not loose with your words you're not loose with your advice you're not quick you know to give a an off the cuff answer that means you you can be you can really support your husband in that because your husband will have maybe sometimes in his leadership position a million people speaking to him or a million people saying things to him and he can be forget things but as a minister's wife especially with the women in the congregation or the organization your husband's leading you can be a very collective person that means what you say won't be off the cuff comments but can be very penetrating to their situation can be very insightful to their situation in pastoral counsel and so that can be you if you're a collective person and a calm person you you might say fewer words than your husband sometimes but those fewer words can be more penetrating and more insightful you can use that intuition that you have to be more insightful in the the kind of counsel that you give and that will really support your husband's leadership and it will make you even more respectable so that's why again the word of god says don't be a person who's intoxicated but rather be calm and collective because your counsel your advice will be a lot more insightful a lot less damaging a lot more wise praise the lord and that will be a great support to your husband's leadership and again you might be more of a person in the background but don't be so much in the background that you you know your, your husband is just the one that's seen you're there to support your husband but you're also there to be his eyes and ears sometimes and again you can't do that if you're intoxicated you can't do that if you're not a calm collective person if you're always rushing around all the time even in the mind because you, you don't always rush around in your actions you can rush around in your mind you know you can miss your husband's going to miss things but you can then miss things that you shouldn't have missed because because you're rushing around in your head or you're so far in the background you kind of uh, put yourself in a, a uh, in a box as it were where you don't want to see things you don't want to minister into things but then you're not helping your husband's leadership 
as you can by being insightful, but by counselling with penetrating words that can really help people. And people can then really trust you. So it halves the weight, doesn't it? That your husband might be having to have, it halves his weight of the load and, and, and what he might bear, especially from the woman's side. You know, especially in today's church where, you know, you, you must protect your husband from women, from accusation that can come from women. Also from temptation that your husband can have. You know, we see ministers falling uh, sexually in, in, in adulterous affairs all the time in ministry. Satan will try that root of temptation with ministers uh, uh, with husbands who are ministers, he will try. That, that's not um, a, a husband's weakness. That He will try that. that. That will be a root of temptation with women in the church to do that. He will send in a man's ministry, in a husband's ministry, people to tempt him uh, in that way. You know, uh, that's, that's just life. That's just the temptation of the world. That's what the devil does that's what the flesh does you know that's not looking down on your husband that's just fact so you can be that uh, a place of protection but if you're in the background too much then people don't visually see you as his wife and and so that gives more leeway to wrong things taking place let's just leave it there but so you need to be in that balance where even if you're in the background a little bit you're not you're still visual and still part of ministering to women's lives to to so that he doesn't have to come under that pressure or even under that temptation as much praise the lord so what what else faithful faithful is another positive attribute for a minister's wife and it means to be trusted relied on uh, who show a persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business and the execution of commands and the discharges of official duties. That's, that's a bit of a mouthful, as it were. But really, you, you are a reliable person. People in the congregation, and your husband as well, if you're a minute, leader's wife, need, you need to be a reliable person. So you've got to be a, trust per, a trustworthy person, and you need to be a reliable person. Do, are you a person who does what you say? You know, if you're in a congregation or an organised Christian ministry, do, do you, what, is your word your bond? Can people trust your words? Can you be relied, relied on? Can your husband also rely upon you? Because if he's leading and there's something that you should, uh, uh, been do, should be doing, does he have to keep coming back to you all the time to remind you? Or can you be re is your word your bond? Can he rely upon you? Because there's lots of things to be going on with. But to share some of that burden, your husband needs to be able to know that you can be relied upon to fulfill those uh, official duties. That's what the word of God says, to fulfill those official duties in the church um rather than coming back and saying you know and then think well it's not done and so what he has to do then is take on that area that you could have helped him with and and so the burden gets more and more when the burden gets more and more upon his shoulders then uh, with various things that's when he can go into himself in his own mind and feel depressed and there's many ministers who feel depressed there's there's many ministers and who feel depressed uh psychologically burdened and also that suicidal thoughts amongst ministers is on the increase uh, because there's so much demand in church life today and so there's so much demand and some of it's their own fault for not distributing uh what needs to be distributed in but you you his first and foremost partner in ministry is his wife and you as a wife are his first and foremost partner in ministry. And so you also need to be relied upon to fulfill official church ministerial duties, if you want to call it that, because the word of God says so. You need to be reliable. And so you need to be reliable to your husband, 
because you're and also your husbands who are listening to this uh, if you're a minister you need to be able to rely upon your wife and if your wife is reliable then rely upon her spread the burden a little bit don't try and do it all yourself but also the congregation needs to see the wife and you as wives as a reliable person that's so important that that's that faithfulness you see faithfulness is reliability that you do what you say you carry out what needs to be carried out that's that faithfulness and that's so key in ministry to have a husband and a wife in ministry who are reliable trusted good reputation and and uh, you know not intoxicated and and do what they're supposed to do not perfection look we all fail we all fail we all get things wrong we all forget especially as we get old don't forget what we went upstairs for sometimes so there has to be you know a balance to this doesn't there you know but i'm talking about patterns behavior in the needs to be a reliability in the di- in the discharge of official duties and if your husband has asked you share some of the burden please uh, can you do this or can you speak to that lady in the church or in that ministry or counsel the then yes you might be in the background but you still need to be visible and you need, still need to discharge those duties that your husband might be relying up, upon you for and that's supporting him in his ministry as a helpmeet that's what the word of god says praise the lord but also husbands if you're a leader you've got to learn also to let go a little bit and not try and do it all yourself and also work together with your wife because your wife is the most important person in your ministry team i'm going to say that one more time your wife is the most important person in your ministry team praise the lord amen so them are the things you must be but what about the things you shouldn't be well it says here that you shouldn't be a slanderer it says not a slanderer and and it means it's prone to slander again this is about a pattern behavior not a one-off mistake that you think that means oh you're out now you can't lead anymore this is about prone to slander this is a pattern of life uh, slanderous accusing falsely accusing falsely basically are you a person who goes out your way to accuse people getting the wrong end of the stick all the time is that an old saying getting the wrong end of the stick in any circumstance uh, that's going on in the ministry in church uh, and you get you 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 know you you you're not asking the right questions you're not getting the facts but you're being slanderous you're getting the wrong end of the stick and so that really can set your husband up if you like that if your husband's a leader in the church and and you think you've got you you, you've you've got the facts and you haven't got the facts and kind of you're speaking into his ear something about a couple or a situation in the church and you can really get him to fire the bullets that you want to fire god doesn't want you to be get your husband to fire bullets in the church some ministers are almost firing bullets from the pulpit firing bullets in congregational um uh, what's the word council because the wives think because the wives think this is happening because the wives think that's what the person's like all the look facts must be gotten facts are needed in church life as leaders it's important to get the facts slanderous means you haven't got the facts you're slandering somebody's name reputation or circumstance through gossip a lot of the time without any facts whatsoever and it means that basically you will end up accusing that person falsely and so as a wife of a leader don't be accusing falsely get facts don't gossip about it once you've got facts you can approach things in order and and correctly can't you and the old aim is already always to minister to people's lives to bring them into maturity in christ not to accuse not to condemn but to move them forward and so always get facts when it comes to circumstances in your church or in your ministry 
And so the Lord says again, through his word, likewise their wives must be reverent, must be temperate and faithful, but not a slanderer, because gossip and accusation that is false can be so damaging. You can have a thriving congregation, thriving, thriving ministry, but it can be destroyed through false accusation. So let's have a look at the life in focus. A leader's wife must be known and respected for having a godly character and conduct. Otherwise, it will reflect badly on her husband and hinder the ministry. As a wife of a minister, you should not be a person who constantly gossips and slander people in your congregation or ministry. Don't be a control freak in the church. Listen to me carefully. Don't be a control freak in the church. Learn to lead by example and with calmness. So if you're a wife who hides behind your... You're really the minister, but your husband's the minister, if you know what I mean. And you're controlling or speaking through your husband, firing the, the shots, as it were, through him, using him. That's wrong. Let he's the let him lead. You're supporting his leadership. Don't be the the one really is the control freak. If the congregation cannot trust the wife, they will not trust the husband. So be controlled in your conversations. As a minister's wife, you must be a person must not be a person, sorry, who gets drunk because drinking heavily loosens your mouth. And can destroy people in your congregation. I'm going to say that again. Getting drunk and drugs, by the way, can and drinking heavily loosens the mouth and can destroy people in the congregation. It is important to be an ex uh, an example wife to your husband, so uh, for your husband, so others can follow the example. So be the example wife. So other wives in the congregation will also follow your example. People who see a devoted wife will know your husband can be trusted as a minister. So if you're a wife of a leader or a minister and you are showing yourself to trust your husband, guess what? Others then will be able to trust your husband in his leadership. So now let's have a light bulb moment. Decide to be someone who can be trusted and relied on in your church. Discuss, and I only have one discussion point today, and it's this. Ask yourself if you are respected and respectable in your church and life. That's a, you have to look at that and say, how am I doing on this? Can I be relied on? Am I being trusted? Am I respectable? You know, no. People might not for whatever reason, but examine yourself first to see, make sure that you are a respectable wife, you are a person who can be relied upon, your word is your bond, and things like that. So until next time, I'm Built for Life. God bless you.